I want to talk about what is essay because, you know, Gen Z is kind of shifting and I love this, but Gen Z is really into consent but they're very bad at boundaries. Gen Z is really into consent, but very bad at communication. Gen Z wants you to, con like they want to honor consent, but they're very naive. I didn't realize like, oh, this is the learning curve between millennials who never had explicit consent to Gen Z that want explicit consent, but the same thing is happening to both generations, which is like social awkwardness, lack of communication, not knowing how to communicate boundaries, and not knowing what essay is. So what is essay? That is the question. Because we, I love explicit consent. You know, I learned explicit consent in underground groups like BDSM and queerness, but Gen Z is learning it in normal TikTok like bubbles. So... Talk to me, what is essay? How would you describe that? You know, I was watching Papa Gut and Tom Foolery watch the H3 and um, Fresh and Fit debate. And, you know, just to see if, you know, my take was in any way, like if we were all had similar takes or what, we deviated on some parts, but for the most part, we all had similar-ish takes. We deviated at some, but one of the things that we find complicated is what is essay? You know, in Myron's case with the girl who went to his apartment, for us, I think all as millennials, all of us disagreed it was essay. But Gen Z seems to really think that was essay. When we talk about this girl who had who got tickled, I wouldn't consider that essay, but I could see why somebody would have a relationship with it all the same that maybe feels traumatizing. So what do you guys consider essay? Because I was thinking about this. I really, I think for myself, and I'm going to meditate on this more. I think grape and essay, which are different things, okay, different things. I think they have to be intentional for me to actually be grape or essay. I think I am open to social mistakes, misreadings of body language, awkward moments, miscommunications. If the person I'm having a miscommunication with genuinely does not intend to hurt me, genuinely does not intend to cross my boundaries and accidentally does that, I would never want to accuse that person of essay or grape. But if I fight back, if I say no, if I if I make indications like walking away and they follow, if I do any, uh, if I do many of the absolute no's and then that's denied, I think there's a conversation to be had, right? So when I think about essay or grape, I want to make sure that the person who's committing the crime and not crime in the legal sense, let's say in the moral sense right now, because legality is too difficult. Let's talk about the morals uh, or ethics, I guess, of how we want society to act. I have to have intentionality on their part. I really do. Because otherwise, without that intentionality, it just feels like it's an awkward miscommunication. You know what I mean? So then the question is, how do we know the intent of somebody? Right? How do we know the intent of somebody? Now, as millennials... The way you would know intent is flirt, flirting, but a very specific kind of flirting, a a sort of um, not discussed flirting. This is heterosexual relationships. Queer relationships could be similar, but in queer circles, there's a lot more communication that goes into what we know is flirting and how it leads to sex, you know? So, so I'm just interested on how you guys know. For me, I just bluntly ask. And I've often been praised by especially men that I've approached where I'm like, hey, if you would like to have sex, I would like us to get tested. I would like us to have birth control. Would you like to have sex? And they're always like, whoa, you just like full on came out and asked. And I was like, well, I don't want to show up to your house, have us flirt and then go to sex because I don't have sex like that. I don't have sex without testing. Um, the only time I've had sex without testing was once and that was uh, who I lost my virginity to and basically like he had been with a couple other people and like I assumed he was good we were good but that's it every other sexual partner I've had I've always had testing beforehand so I've never had a one night stand so I I if I go to someone's house if I have alone time with them if we've been flirting if there's any chance for sex whatsoever I always talk about it before I go over or I talk about it when I'm there with them and I say, hey, I would love to have sex with you eventually. Do we want to get together another time? Because I would love to do that with you. You know what I mean? But again, I am sex positive. I don't want to get graped. You know, I already deal with my past assault as it is. And in my past assault, obviously, like I did try to leave. I did try to get up. 
and I was denied access to leaving that area. And so that's why for me, like, it's even more of a, like a shocking thing that anyways, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get triggered. So the point is, is that for me, like I always have had amazing sexual experiences because I've been such a clear communicator. And the one time I had a bad experience, it didn't seem like it was up to me in terms of leaving because when I made my opinion clear, it wasn't listened to. I've never told a man no thank you and he's ever like pushed my boundary in in my lived experience other than like, you know, kind of douchebaggery guys who are like, come on, baby, I want your number. I want your number. And you're like, no, thank you. And then they follow you around and you're like, hey, stop following me. And they're like, come on, baby, give me your number. Like that's that's the kind of consent violation I've experienced outside of my assault, which I just think is like bad flirting technique. And people are often taught to flirt that way. Okay, now I want to read your text, your messages. Okay, Mimi says, essay is when there's no indication that anything sexual could happen and then it does. Oh, in no shape or form, there's an implication that anything sexual could happen, but that it happens. Mm, I think I need more clarification because that could look like anything. No, I don't think I like that. That's too vague, right? I feel like essay is when you do something against someone's explicit consent or consent or not without their consent, but without their consent that's explicit and clear. Whoa, Madison says, I consider essay grape. You consider honking a boob grape? You consider like touching someone's butt grape? That feels extremely dangerous. Like, I'm just going to say that out loud. Like, there is a hierarchy to how assaults can happen. And there's ways it could happen. Like, there are different, you know what I mean? Like, it's all, I'm not going to measure your suffering. Like if you're suffering, your suffering is individual. I'm not going to tell you how much it should impact you. Obviously, I'm not going to like play that game. But for me, that feels very strange to put those things in the same category, right? Like penetrative sex versus some, like, you know what I mean? Somebody grabbing you and kissing you. Like, I don't know. I don't even consider that automatically essay, by the way. Because again, when I was in clubbing scenes, it's very normal for clubbers, bar hoppers, people in that drinking area to see somebody and just like start making out with them. Like I told my partner this story when I was at gay clubs and the way you learned how it works is it just happened to you and then you understood the vibe is like you would show up and I remember this gay guy, I would go party with my friends straight and gay and this gay guy saw me from across the room and I'm like newly 21, 22, 22, 22, 23, 22, 22, 22, 22 how old am I? Probably just newly 21, I think, at this point. He sees me. I see him. And he comes walking up to me, grabs me by the face, and starts making out with me. And I was like, I pushed him away. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, you don't want to make out, bitch? I was like, no, bitch. I don't want to make out with you. And he was like, oh, my God. Why? And I was like, I just don't like to make out with strangers like that. But my friend over there, she's straight. And she will absolutely make out with you. And he's like. And then he, like, walked away and went to go make out with her. I wasn't assaulted, but I can see why somebody would feel like that's assault. But for me personally, that's just the vibe of the room. And so I'm okay with it. I'm not, I'm okay with it in a sense that I don't consider it assault, but I also didn't want to do it. But I don't consider it assault because it's like called the vibe, guys. And again, I can see how that can be traumatizing to somebody who's like absolutely unaware that a club is a sexual space. Uh, specifically, that club was a sexual space. But I knew I was going into a sexually charged space. People were go-go dancing and dicks were out. Well, not literally, but you know what I mean. Like their boobs were out. My gay friends were like grabbing my tits and we we're all just like hitting each other. Straight guys, girl, like, you know what I mean? So again, for me, that wasn't sexual. That wasn't essay. But I can see why somebody might think that's essay. But for me, like it's just a vibe. And again, lots of people go to clubs to get drunk and make out with strangers. That's why they go there. That's literally why they would go there. So you're kind of like, how do we have a space in the world where people get to have different lived experiences? Wait, good point. Fishy says, how does chat here define grape? Yeah, how do y'all define grape? Let's actually have that conversation too. What do you mean testing? I mean, STI testing, like um, herpes and HIV and, and, you know, syphilis. Like you get tested. So you know when you have sex, you know if you have something or if you can contract something. So yeah, testing means STI testing, sexually transmitted illnesses or infections. Sorry, not illnesses, infections. Hannah says context always matters. I think that's what makes 
things so hard to define, especially essay. I agree with that. Uh, Maris says, I think there should be mutual responsibility on both sides. The person that feels uncomfortable has the responsibility to speak up. Assault is when you ignore the spoken boundary. Yeah, I think like I'm having a really hard time because Gen Z seems so passionate, which I love to see where they really want consent honored. And I think that's so beautiful. But we've got to be clear about what a consent boundary looks like. What are we talking about when we say consent boundary? What are we talking about when we say essay? What do we mean when we say grape? Because that's just so specific, you know? Do we trust people to speak on their boundaries? Probably not. A lot of you are fucking traumatized. A lot of us were messy in our teens and 20s, you know? And again, I want to stop grape too. I want to stop people from having ill intent towards people. Problem is, is like, how do you do that? Like, I think cheating is a consent violation. Some people don't. So we can't even agree on what a consent violation is. I think financial infidelity is also a consent violation. You know, what is what is a consent vi violation? I also think making your kids go to bed on time is a consent violation, but it's just the one we like. It's one that's good for society to send your beds, your kids on time to bed so they can get their proper sleep. Ramona says, yeah, the grapist usually won't respect you at all. Yeah, I feel like there's the manipulation grapist who like drugs your drink or convinces you or pressures you or threatens you. Then there's the grapist who literally just doesn't give a fuck, will slam your head, a car, a, a, you know, into a car, hold you down, like doesn't give a fuck about you. There's so many different kinds of grapists as well. But I think ultimately the grapist is the one that never stops. The grapist is the person that violates the consent over and over again. The grapist or essay is the person who when you say, hey, I'm not actually into this, is like, does it matter? Don't care. I'm going to do it anyways. Then you're like, okay, whoa. Because it's one thing, like literally, it is very different when you say, hey, I actually don't like that. And someone's like, oh my God, my bad. And somebody being like, I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. There's like a fucking difference. Discord says, for me, grape is specifically penetrative. So any other major places being penetrated without consent. So any of the major places being penetrated without consent. Okay. Alex says, I think disliking or getting your decision to do something is also part of the conversation that is missed. It's okay to feel some type of way about what you did in the moment. For sure. I mean, God, I think we all regret something. I've definitely regretted like having sex at certain times. I'm like, oh, shouldn't have done that. But like, hey, what are you going to do? Fishy says, essay can happen different ways, even in situations that started out consensual. Very true. Very true, right? Obviously you can start consensually and if consent, I've revoked consent mid-sex, guys. I know how to do it. And obviously, I am really lucky that I've always chosen partners that respected my consent. I think that's the huge difference is that even though I've dated assholes, I've dated some of the most toxic people. None of them have never respected during sex my explicit consent to be like, no more sex. You know what I mean? That's why my grape is a grape to me because I'm like, in this instance, not only did I not... in in like in charge like not only did I not start the interaction okay like it wasn't even didn't start it didn't finish it no part of me was a part of that equation in all of my consensual sexual experiences I was a part of the equation I was there to negotiate I was there to consent I was there to talk I mean we were having sex I was there to say oh my god I'm so sorry I'm actually like in a lot of pain right now I don't think I can keep going and my partner's like oh my god no problem I've had so many instances. I'm married. Of course, there are going to be moments where I'm like, holy shit, like, I don't feel that good right now. I think I have a cold. Oh, my God, I don't feel that good right now. Like, we got to stop. People can revoke consent mid-sex. It's not hard. What's hard is when you have somebody that doesn't give a fuck that you've revoked consent or somebody that doesn't speak up and expects their partner to read their fucking mind. That's what's hard. It is not hard to have consensual sex in which you revoke consent halfway through. The only people that are going to get mad at you for revoking consent halfway through are assholes. And the only people that are going to let you keep having sex with them when they don't want you to is assholes. Uh, Discord says, what are different people's definitions of consent? Does it have to be communicated to the other person? And how must it be communicated body language or verbally? Great question, right? What's your, and that would, see, I would tell you to pre-negotiate that. But most of dating culture doesn't want to do that. And when I tell you to do that, you tell me I'm a prude. You know how many people have been like, you're such a prude. And I'm like, just ask for consent beforehand. Just talk about it beforehand. Talk, bring, you know, STI paperwork and bring condoms and bring lube and bring whatever you need. But have conversations. Tell your friends, I'm going over to this person's house to have sex. T make sure people know, you know. But I think shame also plays a role in this from the man and the woman's perspective. If we're talking about heterosexual sex. I do think a lot of people have very stunted ideas around what is sex for. 
like Fresh and Fit say sex is for novelty when you've had lots of it. I think sex is for connection. Whether it's casual or not, you're just having a moment in time to connect with another person. Hannah says coercive essay. Is it real or is it bad flirting? What about sex under deception? Is that shitty or is that essay? Depends on the circumstance, but I'm going to side on anything with deception, anything with lying. Bad. Bad. Example, I'm on birth control and you're not actually on birth control. Super bad. You should be blacklisted. Um, I have no STIs, but you know you have an STI. Blacklisted. Okay. People, you know how many people I meet, men and women who are like, um, I know I have herpes, but I don't feel like I have herpes. And I'm like, what? What do you mean you don't feel like you have it? And they're like, I know I got diagnosed, but I don't feel like I have it. And I'm like, um, ma'am. So again, I think so much shame plays a role in this. So many people I know with STIs are so ashamed of it. They won't like tell people until they're hot and heavy. And that's a part of coercion. Getting your partner so turned on that they are so turned on they can't even think about their own consent, that's fucked up. You need to tell people when they're not even in the mood, hey, just so you know, I'm not on birth control. Just so you know, I have an STI. Just so you know. That way they can really think about it. Give them a couple days even. Don't get them hot and heavy, your finger in their pussy, and they'll be like, by the way, I have herpes. <laughs> you're like three inches in, and you're like, I have herpes. <laughs> you know, don't do that. That's fucked up. That's blacklisted. You're blacklisted. Tachi says, essay is when someone knowingly violates the other person's sexual boundaries without actual penetration because that would be great. Okay, I'm down with that. Essay is when someone knowingly violates another person's sexual boundaries without actual penetration because that would be great. I'm, I'm down with that. Marina says, I saw a person on Twitter say they were sexually assaulted because they were on a video call and the other person began masturbating. Ooh, that's a good example, okay? Um, were they sexually assaulted? We need a better word for that. They definitely were something like consent was violated, right? If somebody's like, I've, I, if someone's masturbating when you didn't consent to that, right? You know what I mean? Like something about that. Stealthing is definitely grape. Is stealthing grape? If stealthing, stealthing is grape, then women who have sex without birth control are graping as well, right? Because the issue with the stealthing is that they think you're wearing a condom when you're not, which is a protection against pregnancy and STIs. So if a woman, and this happens a lot, knowingly has sex without birth control in, was the man graped? I mean, I definitely think he was sexually violated. I definitely think stealthing is 1000% sexual violation. Grape feels a little bit different to me. I'm willing to say like definitely like canceled. You know what I mean? Very much canceled. Artemis said I slept with a woman who did that to me. She sat on my face and then after was like, oh, by the way, I have herpes, but I never had a breakout, so don't worry. <laughs> Canceled. Canceled. That's so fucked up. That's not okay. That's what I mean. Canceled. But so many people, so many people are so casual with so many things, which again, fine if you're all going to be casual with each other. But when you interact with people that are less casual in that way, it's fucking like, <gasps> you know what I mean? It's like traumatizing. Okay. So again, like I would like to live in a world where people were very forthcoming with their STIs, very forthcoming with their birth control status, very forthcoming with everything. Look, I was off birth control when I first started dating my now husband. And before he came to America, even though there was a very strong chance we might not like each other and we might not have sex, I got on birth control because I had a feeling we were going to like each other. And I got on birth control, which cost me $1,200 to get the implant in my arm. So in case, in case he and I decided to engage, I would be ready. We also both got STI tested, even though we were still in the courting process, even though there was a chance we could physically meet and not like each other. We, in case we did indeed like each other physically in the way we thought we might, we made sure to get tested and we got birth control and we did all the precautions. Because it's, that's just what a responsible adult does. Now, here's the question. At what age should you be considered a responsible adult? Because I know a lot of y'all are over the age of 45 and you're not responsible for shit, bro. You know how many people I meet where I'm like, hey, is your girlfriend on birth control? They're like, I don't know. I trust her. I'm like, hey, have you been tested? They're like, I don't have to get tested. I know if I'm sick or not. Ma'am, so many, so many. That's why I'm saying like, call me a prude. But I ask people, I'm like, where's your STI paperwork? Have you got it done in the last 72 hours? Where, what's your like method of contraceptive? You know what I mean? So many people I know, so many people I know 
literally just like i know if my dick has a cold i don't need to get tested oh i know if i have something i don't have to get tested and i'm like cool again fine but don't involve yourself with me right but then they get all offended like why are you looking at me like i'm a bad person i'm not saying you're a bad person bitch but i'm saying you're hella irresponsible and i'm not gonna have sex with someone that irresponsible again all of my sexual experiences have been consensual and rather responsible mostly because i took it upon myself to make sure i was always birth controlled up and i got tested and i would go get testing with my partner or i would be like where's your paperwork and I want it to be recent, girl. What is the expectation of responsibility we're putting on people? And how do you help people take precaution without victim blaming? How do you help people learn how to avoid, you know, bad situations without victim blaming? Because I try to do it to the best of my ability. It's very difficult for, for people to recognize how they've contributed to their own life. Example, you're dating someone, you say, I trust them. They would tell me if they had an STI. I love you. But you know what's even better than trust? Evidence. Get the paperwork. Go to the appointment with them. Have the doctor read out the appointment results in front of you. Because genuinely, what's better trust than proving to someone time and time again you're not hiding something from them? This whole I trust them, they don't have to prove it to me thing, th very romantic, kids. I, I, you know what I mean? Maybe I'm not that romantic, you know? I think I'm pretty fucking romantic. But you know what's romantic? Getting STI tested together getting some condoms together, getting some, you know what I'm saying? So how do we do that? How do we tell people to be responsible without victim blaming? Because I'll tell you, I know people, and this is what's horrifying. I know people who do everything correctly and still get graped. So it's not about avoiding grape. It's not what I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you how to find out how to weed out the malicious characters from the good ones. And yet, even if you do everything correctly, yeah, somebody might trick you enough to actually put you in a position to grape you. And that is devastating. It has happened to people in my life. I've seen it happen around me. They do everything correctly. They do check-ins. It's a friend of a friend. They make sure that they're safe. And that person still like drugs their drink or, you know, holds them down or puts them in a compromising situation. Yeah. Even if you do everything correctly, you might still end up graped. And that is devastating. The question is, when you're not even dealing with a rapist and just a regular person, how do you stay safe? The thing is, how do you weed out possible rapists? And then, of course, even if you do everything correctly, it could, of course, still happen to you. Sound says, hey, Brittany, Jen X's theme was F around and find out. They told us we would be dead by 25. We're lucky that we obey traffic lights. Now, millennials, we gave them participation trophy trophies. So millennials did not get participation trophies. Like, which millennial? Certainly not me. Like, I don't even know what a part... When did participation trophies... Like, it was obviously, like, maybe younger millennials, but barely. You know, participation trophies aren't the problem. The problem is, like, nobody, and only in small circles, were actually teaching their kids about sex ed. How many religious people didn't even let their kids go to sex ed? And then on top of that, who's even good at teaching it in the first place? Participation trophies came in around the 90s. Not in my bubble. In my bubble, I remember them coming around in conversation when I was probably like 15 or 16 or 17, maybe even 18. <laughs> Big D says my dad started he my dad talked to me about sex three years after I started having it. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> now look, I didn't have sex till I was 22. One, because I was picky as hell. Two, I was really, really conservative. So until I was like a liberal. I was like, I'm going to wait till marriage. So it's just kind of funny. Like, it is kind of funny, like, how, li how life changes. Once I decided I was a liberal and I was like, fuck religion, fuck God. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to, like, have sex before marriage. I was very picky. And I made sure, like, again, like, I already done all the research because I'd been in BDSM groups. I'd been in queer groups. They gave me the sex education I never got as a teenager. And so I learned even now, like, Look, as an older sister that has informed her younger siblings of all of this precaution that I recommend, they still make messy decisions. You know how many of my siblings still call me? They're like, so you know how you told me not to do the thing? I was like, yes. And they're like, well, I did it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Even the, you can literally tell young people, don't do this. And I sound like my mother now. I sound like a boomer where I'm like, oh, these kids, they don't listen to their elders. But like, y'all don't listen. So you will learn the hard way. Life itself will teach you the lesson you do not want to learn by observation. 
and you will live with that through trauma and through scars and you will learn to live with it. You will learn to like grow attached and detached from it. And you will remember to gain wisdom through this tool of suffering or you will drown in your trauma. You, if you cannot learn by observation, you will learn by participation and you will get to live with your scars just like me and just like other people in that category. You will find out the hard way. Welcome to the club, kids. Welcome to the club. You know how many times I've touched the stove? A lot. And I got some permanent ass scars. Colleen says my mom didn't talk to me about sex until I was married with a kid. My poor choices were definitely more about the lack of education, not a participation trophy. Girl. I love that, girl. Yeah, I just don't think people have the education. And then even though they do have the education and they know better, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. I'm telling you right now. Don't fuck Myron. Don't fuck Destiny. Don't fuck Sneeko. And you're still going to do it, aren't you, bitch? You're still going to do it. You're going to date these. You're going to do it. You're going to date these men that consistently mistreat themselves and the women around them who consistently talk about how they think women are less than or pretend that women aren't, but then treat them like they are. Like they're little girls who need their daddies to hold their hands, who currently infantilize women at any corner because they can't handle their own choices or the kinds of toxic women they attract. Then they lie and misuse the relationships and then you're still going to be with them because you think I'm a prude and that you can change them and oh, your pussy's so great and you're going to cling to his dick and he's going to transform right in the middle of coming. Oh, you were right. Women are great. You're waiting for them to scream mid coming. Women are equal to men. Let's wrap this up like a condom. Okay, let's wrap it up. Girls, I don't like condoms like the rest of you. You still gotta use them. Condoms come in handy and they come in a lot of variations. Also, shout out to everyone making gifts of me I, and putting it on tenor. I appreciate it. Tag me as Brittany Simon though, yo, so I can find them please because like what? I fucking love them. Thank you. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.